And we're live. All right, 10.6 calculus of polar curves. Um, we could start with the fact that we know dy dx is dy d theta over dx d theta. All right, so what is dy d theta and what's dx d theta? Well, we know that y is our sine theta and x is our cosine theta. So if I wanted to find dy, so r is just a function of theta. So you could think of that as r of theta, if that makes more sense. r really isn't a variable, it's a function, so it's r of theta, if that makes more sense. Okay, so then dy d theta would be r times the derivative of sine theta, which is cosine theta, plus sine theta times the derivative of r, so r prime, I guess. And if x is that, then dx d theta would be r times the derivative of that, which is negative sine theta, plus cosine theta times r prime. All right, so what is dy dx? It's dy d theta over dx d theta. So then we could say dy dx is r cosine theta plus sine theta r prime. I just got that from dy d theta over dx d theta, which is uh, negative r sine theta plus cosine theta r prime. All right, so if I wanted to find uh, the derivative or the slope at any particular um, polar point, you could find dy dx by using that formula right there, derived from our x and from our y. If I wanted to know where is their vertical or horizontal tangent, well, the horizontal tangent would be wherever my change in y is zero, because it's going horizontally, it's not going up or down, so dy d theta is zero, so you'd set this equal to zero and solve, and if you want a vertical tangent, that means your x direction is not changing, so dx d theta is zero, you set that equal to zero. So here's my little notes. Define horizontal, you set dy d theta equal to zero. Vertical, you set dx d theta equal to zero. And so, however, where dy d equals zero, you cannot conclude anything. Um, so you have to find the limit as theta approaches whatever angle it is and use L'Hopital's. So we get zero on top and zero on bottom. That's indeterminate form. So you want to find the limit and see what happens. If you end up getting zero after you do L'Hopital's, that means you do have a horizontal. If you end up getting infinity, that means you end up with zero on the bottom, then you have a vertical tangent. Okay, so if they're both zero, you have to find the limit as theta approaches the angle. All right, so there's an example in the book, example one, that shows you that. 10.6. Should have had a page marked. All right, so this is a big daddy problem. Um, so we're finding horizontal and vertical tangents. We're given R. Okay, find the horizontal and vertical tangent. So you want to find out what dy d theta is and dx d theta. So x is R cosine theta. So we replace our R with 1 minus cosine theta. So that's my x. It's 1 minus cosine theta times cosine theta. So we have our x equation. And then you'd want to find the derivative of that, dx d theta. And y, remember, is r sine theta. So we replace our r with that r. 
and find each of those derivatives. All right, so dy d theta, we found the, or the book found, the derivative of this right here using what? Product rule, and et cetera. So dy d theta ends up becoming all of this stuff. You'd set it equal to zero. Looks like they factored it. Set it, e could set it equal to zero. And we get all four of these answers. We get zero, 2 pi, 2 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. So at those points, our dy d theta is 0. So those are all potential horizontal tangents at those four points. Why do I say horizontal? How do I know that? What do I need to check? Are you following me? What would be something where it would not be a horizontal tangent at those four points? That's okay. Okay. No, so if the dx d theta also gets the same angle, then we don't know what happens. Both dy d theta and dx d theta, we have to pursue that further. So these are four potential horizontal tangents. There is going to be overlap, so we're going to, I'll show you that. Okay, so now, next thing, you want to find dx d theta, so we just find the derivative, set it equal to zero, so set that equal to zero, set sine theta equal to zero, and we get those four, uh, those five. So pi over three, five pi over three, zero, pi, and two pi. So in this problem, we've got, i write it down here, horizontal, vertical. So for horizontal, we've got theta equal to zero, two pi, two pi over three, and four pi over three. And then vertical, we've got potential vertical tangents at pi over three, five pi over three, zero pi, and two pi. Okay, so where, what angle or angles, is there an overlap? Zero and two pi. Yeah, we've got at zero and at two pi, we have a dx d theta and a dy d theta equal to zero. Okay, so we know for sure we have two horizontal tangents. They occur at theta equals 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. And we have three vertical tangents. But we don't know what's going on at 0 and 2 pi. So what we have to do is we have to find the limit as theta goes to 0 and 2 pi of dy d theta over dx d theta and see what happens. Right now it's at 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. So we'd use L'Hopital's on top and bottom or, and try to figure out what the limit is as theta goes to 0 and 2 pi, which is what the book is going to do here. So they have, there's dy d theta, there's dx d theta, they do L'Hopital's, so the derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom, we end up getting 0 over 1, which is 0. So since you get 0, that means the more dominant, what? well, since you get 0, you have a horizontal tangent. Okay, so we have a horizontal tangent at 0 and 2 pi. If we had gotten infinity, then they would be vertical tangents at 0 and 2 pi. So from our list, those exist on the horizontal side, they don't exist on the vertical side. All right, so that's, those are the angles in which they occur. If you go back to the problem, it says, find the horizontal and vertical tangents. Okay, so, 
you'd want to find the points, like the polar points in which it occurs. Remember, our polar points are r, comma, theta. So plug in, we already know that like at zero our angle is, our theta is zero. If you plug zero into our r equation, that will give you the r. So the r of zero would be one minus the cosine of zero. So one minus the cosine of zero is one. So one minus one is zero. So one order pair is zero comma zero, and I'm not going to do every one of them for you. All right. Questions on that stuff? Yeah, so for the very first step. Yep. How did they get to that? <laughs> how did they get to this, like, on the... Right here? Cardioid. The Cartesian? Cardioid. Oh, cardioid? What? Cardioid? Yeah, how did they get to the parametric form? Like, where did that come from? Like, where did this come from? Yeah. So, x is our cosine theta, right? Yeah. And r is given to us. So oh, they, they just plug, plug that in for R. Okay. Yep. And then distribute the cosine. We got that. And then they did a derivative down below. But yeah, Y is R sine theta. So they replaced R with 1 minus cosine. Okay. Good question. Other questions on that type of problem? Or that problem specifically? It's a pretty involved problem, to say the least. All right. Yeah, we. What do you got? Shouldn't there be five then? Five. Like, where? Shouldn't there be, you're not five. Shouldn't there be four horizontal tangents? Uh, yep. So they have, they just did zero, zero, and zero, two pi's. I don't know why that's kind of equal sign. Oh, they, yeah, they're saying those are the same thing. But those would be the same. All right. Time to for an easier problem. So we're going to find the tangents at the pole. Okay, so what we're finding is if we've got, like, a funky problem, maybe it looks like, this that's pretty funky uh, and I wanted to find the equation line tangent of the curve at that pole we're finding that blue line right there okay at the pole means it's at zero zero it's a it's a little bit different than the origin because it can go through the pole multiple times as you can see so back to our equation that we just made right here this is the derivative and what do I know, this is, so this is dy dx, and what do I know is true at the pole? It like when I'm at the pole, what is, pardon me? Zero, zero. Yeah, okay, so what's zero? Remember uh, in polar it's r comma theta. Theta means what angle is it at? r means the distance from the pole. What is true at the pole? What's r equal to? It's zero. Okay, so we're if at the if we're at the pole, then we're r is zero, and we're trying to find that blue line, that tangent line that goes through the pole. So we know that r is zero. Well, if my derivative is this, and I also know that r is zero, you can see that. Well, that disappears. That disappears. So now I'm just left with sine of theta r prime over cosine of theta r prime because the first term in each top and bottom is zero well you also notice that r prime exists on top so really it exists on top and bottom so now we're looking at the sine of theta over the tangent theta or just tangent theta so if we're trying to find the tangent at the pole all you need to do is find the tangent of the angle, and that gives you the slope. That gives you dy dx, which is what we're looking for. And what's the y-intercept if it's going through the pole? Not it's zero. zero. So 
really these problems boil down to y equals the tangent of angle x because it's in y equals mx plus b we don't even need the b because it's y intercept is zero so really we're just trying to figure out it's y equals the tangent of theta x sorry I'm having a hard time keeping it on the screen today okay so maybe your book as an example example two I'll just write it here so this is out of the book um, it says r equals 2 sine of 3 theta from 0 to pi okay and we're trying to find the lines tangent to the rose curve at the pole okay tangent at the pole okay so we want to know when is it at the pole it's at the pole when r is 0 so we can make r 0 and we can solve well the 2 doesn't matter so now sine of 3 theta equals 0 when's the first time that sine is equal to 0 that would be at 0 so 0 equals 3 theta when's the next time that sine is 0 pi so pi equals 3 theta when's the next time sine is 0 2 pi well it might be okay because we're going to end up having to divide by 3 so I'm just setting up equations here divide by 3 so theta equals 0 is the first one divide by 3 theta equals pi over 3 we're still good because we're between 0 and pi divide by 3 theta equals 2 pi over 3 let's do one more see if because those are all good it'd be 3 pi right I'm sorry, I don't have any paper left. I'll sharpen up my pen. 3 pi equals 3 theta, so theta equals pi. We're still okay, because it's going from 0 to pi. If I went one more, I would definitely go beyond our domain. Okay, so we have four different angles that will, um, the rows will go through the pole from 0 to pi. Okay, so now we just have to find out what is the tangent of all those. So the tangent of 0 equals 0. So that means we have a slope of 0. So in Cartesian style, it would be y equals 0. Okay, it's just a horizontal line. Uh, pi over 3, what's the tangent of pi over 3? Lily knows, everybody else needs to figure it out. Uh, mm, wait, wait, see, one pi over three, three is sixty, right? One over square root of three. Sorry. Two square root of three. Okay. So the tangent of pi over three, what is square it? Root square root of three. Square root of three. <laughs> <laughs> the numbers were there. <laughs> so that's my slope. So my equation. So we've got two answers. Two pi over three. So negative square root of 3, so y equals negative square root of 3, x, and then pi, what's the tangent of pi? Zero. zero. So we already have y equals 0. So those would be our three answers. Okay? I mean, the trig's the hardest part. <laughs> yeah, the trig's the hardest part. Uh, so this is Cartesian, so these are our answers. These are the Cartesian equations, like the xy equation. If you wanted to write a line going through the pole, you could also represent it with a polar equation. Um, so like this blue line right here, what's the angle right there? 60 degrees or in pi over 3. So you could say this three, all points on that line are on the line theta equals pi over three. Okay, so that would be the polar line for y equals 
square root of 3x. And then what about this one? Horizontal oh, one. You were just you you were expecting me to go to this next one. I almost did too. I don't know why I didn't. Yeah. So theta equals zero, right? All points lie on that. Even if r was negative, or this point right here, I mean, whether r is positive or negative, it's going to be theta equals zero. What about theta equals four pi over three? That's another way of writing the same line in polar. Do you see that? 4 pi over 3 right here. It's the same line. Could you just write pi over 0? Yep. Theta okay. equals pi would be identical to theta equals 0. Yeah. All right. Oh, geometry lesson. How are we doing for time? Isn't that right? So what if I asked you to find, oh, I don't need that. Um, what's the area of that sector right there? Uh, less than 100. No. No, just think you're in geometry. You're you're giving me the answer. I'm developing a process. Wait, 125 pi. So I don't even know the answer, but I know that it's pi r squared, and then so it's pi times 10 squared, and then what do you do with that? It's a fourth of it, right? So 100 over 4 is 25 pi. You're all over it. Okay, so you got divide by 4 because it's one fourth of the circle. If I asked you to find this, and let's say it's 60 degrees, and you wanted to find, I'll say it's 10 again. So the area of that would be yeah, 1 6th, right? Because 60 yeah. degrees goes into 360, so it would be 1 6th pi times 10 squared. Okay, so finding... So to find the area of a sector, you f you find the fraction of whatever it is times the area of the whole thing. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so what if we were in radians? So uh, the g the degrees version would be like the angle over 360 times pi r squared. That's what we just figured out. Whatever the angle is over 360 times pi r squared. So in this, if we were in radians, it would be the angle over what? 2 pi. 2 pi times pi r squared. That's the area of a sector. In sectors, like a piece of pizza. Like it's a chunk of a circle that has a central angle. So then we have pi's that cross off. So I end up getting 1 half. I'll say r squared in theta. And if r theta was d theta, which is our change in theta, and we added all of them up, you know, we could do a Riemann sum or sigma notation, or we could just integrate from alpha to beta. Is that what I used? Yeah. 1 half r squared d theta, and this will get us the area of a sector or portion of a graph. This is the sum of the areas of a sector. Okay, so we're used to find like integrals in the Cartesian plane is the area B. 
between the curve and the x-axis. In polar, let's say I have Oh boy. Nice. That worked out okay. Not great, but good enough. Let's say I wanted to find the area of this chunk of it, this petal. I would have to find the area of this sector plus the area of this sector. It's a whole infinite amount of little mini sectors. And if you add up all those sectors from this angle to this angle, you have that whole area right there. So you're finding the area of a curve, inside a curve, but we're using sectors rather than rectangles. And the formula is 1 half r squared d theta. What's the b in the fish again for the angles? Uh, those are just uh, variables, like the starting point and the ending point, kind of like a to b. Are they angles? Yeah, they're angles. Because they're Greek letters, it implies that it's an angle in math. So instead of a to b, it's alpha to beta. Angles. Huh? Like, you just plug the angle in for R? No, oh, so I'll give you an example. And it actually looks like the one I just drew accidentally. So, we have to, that's our equation is R equals sine of 3 theta. And you can see that if we find the area of one of them, you could just triple it and you get the area of the whole thing. If you were trying to find all three petals, which you're going to do just do like one of them if you see the symmetry and then just multiply by how many there are. Okay, so we want to know this area, so it's going to start whatever r is zero, because that's where we're starting, and then it's back to where r is zero again. So we can find the boundaries of integration, or alpha and beta, by finding when r is zero. So r is sine 3 theta, we, we already did this problem, so sine of 3 theta zero, right? And the next one is when it's pi over three. That's the next time it's going to be at the pole. We figured that out on the previous problem. Okay, so you can see that's here, goes around, and it's right here. Pi over three, that's our 60 degree angle. That's why it hits like right there. So we have our Boundary. Um, so this, these notes say trace it on your calculator and try to figure out what the angle is when it hits the pole again. We just did it analytically here, so don't feel the need to trace it. Sometimes it may It's like the second time in my life I've suggested tracing on a calculator. The other one is when they're trying to figure out what limits are and you can kind of trace and get close to it. Other than that, I don't like tracing function on the calculator. Okay, so we got 0 to pi over 3. Now it's just 1 half r squared. r is uh, sine 3 theta. So you just replace our r with sine of 3 theta. And there's our integral. And that'll get you the area. Evaluating the integral. Some of them can be kind of tricky in this section. So first, well... I pulled a one half out and then I did a power reduction formula off of Carl. So power reduction from sine squared is going to be a minus. Cosine squared is going to be a plus here. That's the only difference. And it's always cosine and it's double this angle. So if this is 3 theta, that becomes uh, 6 theta. So it's 1 minus cosine 6 theta over 2. Power reduction off of Carl. And then you just evaluate. Uh, I would say that it would help be helpful to know those two for the AP exam, yeah. Alright, how many pages do I have left? One, two more pages? Still with me?
All right. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and I'll give you time. Here's my formula. Here's my R. I want you to find the boundaries of integration to find the area, the smaller loop of the lima zone. I'll give you some time to try that. It looks like lima con, doesn't it? So, so sketch on the calculator. Go to mode. Go down to polar. And y equals is now r equals. So two cosine theta plus one. And I think I was in radians. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't have the, all the features that the Cartesian one, or the function one does. So, what are we doing? Say find the boundaries of integration to find the area of the smaller loop of the Lima zone. Okay. I'll let you think about that. Okay, so we're trying to figure out the boundaries of integration to find the area of the smaller loop. Okay, so. I'm going to trace it, and it starts at right there at theta equals zero. And now I'm going to the right. So right here is where it would start. I'm sorry. Okay, so we would have to start our boundary, like this would be our A, whatever theta is, looks like 2.09. And we're going to find the area as we go around the inner circle until we get to, I'm still moving to the right, right there. So it was about 2.09 to 4.18. Okay, so those are our area, there are our angles. How could we do that analytically? So starting at the beginning, we went zero. What happened when my cursor was right there? That's where it started and that's where it ended. What's true at that point? Where well, are we it's at? at the origin, so it's R at zero. Good. Excellent. So it's at the pole where R is zero. So analytically, we can just set R equal to zero and you can solve it and use your expertise trig to find out what our angles are. Negative one and a half, right? Oops. So where is cosine equal to negative one half? Cosine is an x value, so it's going to be in these two quadrants right over here. Cosine is adjacent or hypotenuse, so that's one, two, and that's negative one. So really, we're just trying to figure out what's that angle. What's our reference angle there? Pi over three. It's pi over three, right? That's 60 degrees. So our angle, our first angle, starting at zero, goes all the way to here. What is that angle right there? Two it's two pi over three. So our first boundary is two pi over three. And then the next one would be when it goes down to here. What is it? Four pi over three, good. 4 pi over 3. So our boundaries of integration would be from 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 is roughly, well, I don't know what the decimal is. Okay, so if we're trying to find the smaller loop, we'd start at 2 pi over 3 and we'd go to 4 pi over 3 because the, if I start it over, and I traced it the first time. 
would be when it hits at 2 pi over 3 and then 4 pi over 3. All right. That was a little confusing. Uh, if I want, so maybe this will be the last thing. Well, for sure, I'm going to run out of time. So, area between polar curves, it's basically the big R squared minus the little r squared. Kind of like the washer method. Uh, find the area outside the curve and inside the rows. So if we're trying to find that shady region, we'll just find one of them and multiply by four. Um, they intersect. I don't know if I analytically do that. You could set those equal to each other and solve. And you get pi over 12, 5 pi over 12. So we would just, oh, I did it right here. Find the boundaries. Set them equal to each other and solve. You get five pi or pi over twelve and five pi over twelve. The four here. Why is there a four in front of my integral? There's four pedal, four regions. Very good. And it's just one half big R squared, which is the outer one, minus little r squared, which is the inner one. And that'll get you the area of all four of those added up. I didn't even want to tackle that one. Looks like I went decimal with my integral. Alright, I'll call that good for today. <laughs>